Hey Hannah Mouse One here, welcome to part 5 of my pumpkin patch panic tutorial series where I'll show you how to make a Halloween themed game over the course of a week. Last time we sorted the UI elements and today we'll be adding in sound effects and getting our game published. Let's start with the music because that's the easiest part, it's just a simple loop. Go to the workplace for this stage and drag in a when green flag is clicked block. Attach a forever loop to this and within this add a play sound pumpkin patch panic song until done. That's literally it. Now onto the sound effects, let's start with the sounds for the player sprite. Find the when E key is pressed script. The first sound that we want to add is the sound for picking up the pumpkins and because this is a sound you'll be hearing a lot we're going to be doing something called pitch shifting which means that the sound will be played at a random pitch each time adding some subtle variation. To do this add a set pitch effect block into this if statement with the item touching plus one of pumpkins is equal to four condition and set it to be pick random minus 10 to 10. Then play sound crunch one and within the distance to boxes less than 32 function play sound jangle one. This will play a sound when you bank a pumpkin and with that we're already done with the player sprite. The pumpkin sprite doesn't need any sound, so skip on to the enemy sprite. Go to the when I start as a clone script that handles the main enemy behaviours. Find the if statement in the ghosts mechanics with the condition distance to player is less than 32 and petrified is equal to zero and add a start sound block into this loop. Drag a pick random block into the input space and set it to be 3 to 4. This will play one of two ghost sounds when the ghost petrifies the player. Then scroll down to the mechanics for the zombies and spiders and find the distance to player is less than 32 if statement. Add an if statement to this with the condition this type is equal to 1. In the if portion, play sound growl 1. And in the else portion, play sound scuttle. The enemies will now play the appropriate sound when scared away by the player. Now go to the pumpkin check script. In the if statement that replaces this check of pumpkins of 0, add a play sound crunch block. And in the if statement that replaces it with 5, add a play sound cobweb block. Pumpkins being trampled and spiders making webs will now both play sounds. Finally, find the when I start the clone script that causes ghosts to fly away after a few seconds. After the wait 5 seconds block, add a play sound block and set it to pick random 5 to 6. This will cause a sound effect to play as the ghost flies away. We can now skip all the way to the play button sprite, add a start sound mouse click 1 block into the when this sprite is clicked script and in the forever loop under the when green flag is clicked script add a start sound mouse click 2 sound after the wait until touching mouse pointer block. This adds a sound when you mouse over and when you click the play button. And that's all the sounds we need, so let's set up the project thumbnail. In Scratch the way that thumbnails work is that whatever is on screen when you save and exit the project for the final time is saved as the thumbnail. Go to the thumbnail sprite and simply add a when green flag is clicked block with a hide block. Then have the sprite show. Make sure that it is at position 0, 0 and there's nothing in front of it. If this is not the case, hit the go to front layer block. Then hit share. The project is now available on Scratch, but I'm also going to show you how to convert your project to HTML so that you can upload it to sites such as itch.io. But if this isn't of interest to you, then we can leave things here. Thanks for watching. Bye. But if you think this is going to be useful, please stick around. First, you're going to need to download some image files they'll be using for the game's page linked in the description. The file will contain a thumbnail image, a loading screen image, and a page icon. Download the zip file and extract all. Then copy the URL for your Scratch project and go to the Turbo Warped Package Manager website, again linked down below. Paste the URL into the box where prompted, upload the icon image you downloaded for the page icon, and upload the loading image for the loading screen image. Make sure that plain HTML is selected as your environment and hit package. You can upload this to any sites that accept HTMLs, but my website of choice is itch.io. If you want to upload to itch, then go to itch.io and either log into your account if you have one or sign up if you don't. Select upload new project from this drop down. Fill in all of the gaps as prompted by the website with the project's title and so on. Where it says upload files, upload the file we downloaded from Turbo Warp. And for the cover image, upload the thumbnail image that you downloaded earlier. In the game's description, add instructions for how to play the game or copy paste them from the description on Scratch. It'd also be great if you could drop me a small credit as this is a game using my own original assets and concepts. Save and view page, then set it to public. And just like that, you've moved your Scratch project beyond the confines of the Scratch website and you've also reached the end of this tutorial series. Congratulations! And if you aren't ready to be finished with your game or if you just want an extra challenge, I want you to try adding in a system that increases your remaining time by 5 seconds every 10 pumpkins that you collect. Or else, maybe come up with a new enemy type for you to add in. But other than that, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this series and this video. Like and subscribe if you did, let me know if there's something you want to see more of. Join the Discord link down below and I'll see you next week with another video. Bye!